we've executed a certain number of this ethnicity, um, but we've executed less of this ethnicity. We got to quit killing these guys until we kill more of these guys. Is that is there like a balance there? How does how do we how do we decide that we're killing too many of one race versus the other, and how do we balance that out? Then I think what he was getting at is that we rather, rather than using race as an option for whether or not we should execute somebody, we tried to eliminate that bias of it. Not so much that we need to have five uh, African Americans die for every five whites that die. Right. It's not a, it's not like an equation like that. But Are there more African Americans um, on death row right now? nationally I'm just curious why we need a law like that if mm -hmm. <laughs> I, well, I, I guess what would prompt Kentucky to pass that kind of a law we don't well I shouldn't say we don't pass laws for no reason because we do but <laughs> what, <laughs> what would prompt us to need to to do that I think something in, in pace is something that you see, one of the first things that catches your eye is skin color. And it, you know, it, it seems that people, uh, if they see somebody who's uh, you know, the color of who's a minority, they, they automatically are more likely to uh, Based just, on skin color? They just want to eliminate the factor that uh, like the judge considers their skin color as the basis so that a person's race should not come into play for their punishment, so to speak. And even back in the anti-communist period, um, a Texas governor named Alan Shivers seriously suggested that capital punishment be the death penalty for anybody who was just a member of the Communist Party, <coughs> let alone. And a lot of people were not happy about that because, granted, if you're getting like onto this base, well, if I'm in this party, why does that have to happen to me and not a person of another party? Or if I'm this race, why does it have to happen? Like, why can't that happen for, let's say, another race in a way? And why can't it be? Well, can I be arrested if I'm affiliated with a gang? Yes. Okay. So why can't I be arrested if I'm affiliated with the Communist Party? I guess it's more of how extreme you are okay so like i guess if you're in a gang that's no it's a really league. nice gang <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think you should still have the right to the legal system mm -hmm. so prove innocent until proven guilty right we should still follow that basis so until you're proven guilty <laughs> nothing like I mean, unless you're known for doing something that's very harmful to others or something in a way that's very extreme that can hurt the country, let's say, as well, then I think you should be on the innocent until proven guilty basis. actually why some of these states that I've read in here still continue their death penalty, such as Michigan. In 18, I think it was 40, in 1846, Michigan became the first state to abolish the death penalty, except for treason against the state. So that, I guess, is like the groundbreaking like no-no. And I mean, if you're putting the state at risk, you're putting I mean, so many people at risk, I guess you could say. Like, that's a lot of lives. And, I mean, if you're proven guilty for that, then I think you should be killed for that. So, does the quantity of a crime define the harshness of your punishment? So, let's say, whether so you're saying treason, right? So, if I'm, let's say, I, um, I don't know, walk into a building and I shoot 10 people. Is that, as opposed to me just shooting one person, so the quantity of my crime, does that negate a harsher punishment? I think it plays a factor, but it doesn't fully. Why? Like, you got to look at all these other aspects that we've said too, like the mental part aspect to it. Like, are you 
in the right state of mind with society. And it, I mean, if you're not, then like, what can we do if there is a way to help fix that, whether that is life in prison or not, or the automatic death penalty, whether it's just we get rid of you automatically to save, to keep that from happening to more people, and then hopefully that gets through to others saying, don't do this, otherwise the same thing will probably happen. Gentlemen, I think we're drawing close on time. What, in your research, as you jumped into this subject, jumped out at you? What was the most surprising thing, the most alarming thing, the, the thing that made you think the most out of your out of your research? Uh -oh. <laughs> like, I'm almost done. I'm going to keep you to the answer, so you might as well answer. Probably how much, what? how often, like, mm -hmm. between the, as I just read off of this article alone, how often, like, states switched from having a death penalty mm -hmm. and how often that bounced back and forth. Having it or not having it? Yes, because one in one year the state of Maine bounced from having it to not having it to having it mm -hmm. in less than a year. And so I thought that was like kind of... Alright, you guys? Uh, you know, was, uh, I can answer. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> one of the things that uh, really caught my attention was uh, right now we have around 3,200 Americans that are sitting on death row. And even though that uh, the death penalty is decreasing in rate, that's still a lot of people. So that's Good job, don't you? Good work. Good work, guys. <laughs> <laughs>